Hello and welcome to Wally Bar. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I dye my wood glue. <laughs> my wood glue at a time when it's wet, just before assembly of my bits of wood. And there's this bit of wood here which has been glued together with PVA. Look at PVA there, PVA wood glue just there. And it's um, that's okay, you know, it's a good glue. But you end up with this bit of a grey line down the middle here, and sometimes you don't want that. If you're gluing them together, say Warner, Oak, Cherry, or any other or darker timber, then, well, darker than the actual glue that you're using, you're going to get a glue line. And it could show up, especially if your woodworking skills are not perfect. It does happen, you know, and sometimes even pros, you know, make mistakes. They have issues. Well, I've been using this stuff. It has cast white powdered resin wood glue. Now anyone who knows this stuff will know it's white. And when you mix it up, it ends up top a creamy white colour. It's good glue. It really is. But that too can leave a white line down the middle of your tabletop, for instance, if you're doing a glue up for a table. You don't want that. No. But because cast white is a powder, you can mix it so it's a colour. Yeah. So you can pretty much match what you're actually gluing together without any discernible, uh, well, difference in strength. I've been doing it for years with the older uh, manufacturer, which was um, Polyvine. Recently, I, well, I stopped using it because Polyvine had a bit of a brain fart and wasn't that good. But now it's Eureka, and Eureka's taken over Cascamite, and they've gone back to the original recipe, which I'm very happy about. And so far, so good. I've had some real success with this stuff. So I'm going to show you how I mix my brown cascamite. Yes, brown cascamite. Now, anyone who knows this stuff, you should wear a dust mask and, well, goggles. I've got the goggles on, the specs on, but really you've got full, full goggles, really, uh, and a dust mask. Because this stuff is urea formaldehyde. Now, I'm mixing it without that because I'm, I'm, I'm jabbering at you. And I'll sound rather muffled if I had a dust mask on. Now, I'm just going to mix this... Um, Use my spatula and old yoghurt pot. Greek yoghurt, that was nice yoghurt, yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit in there just for the purpose of showing you. Okay, so I put two little uh, scoops in there with my spatula. Put this out of the way so I don't breathe that in. Now normally, you'd use a little bit of water for that. Now I put the powder in first, then the water. Yeah, they they tell you to put the water in, then the powder. I, I prefer to do it this way around. Uh, for me, I've had more success. Now, instead of using water though, I'm going to use a water-based wood dye. Yeah, such as this one here. I'm in France, by the way, so you know, for obvious reasons. It's basically just water-based um, wood dye, and it's extract of the Cassel. So it's a natural wood dye. So instead of using water, I'll just drip a little tiny bit of that in there, and then start my mixing. Now, depending on how dark this stuff is, will depend on how dark you make your actual your glue. So I've just dribbled a little bit in there, like so, then I'll start the process of mixing the glue. Now, it's pretty obvious what I'm doing now, and it's kind of, you know, um, it's gonna end up a brown color. Now, you have a choice now. You can either add more of this, so it ends up being the color of the dye, or let's say, for instance, your tin is a little bit lighter than oak, which is what this one is. It's sort of a, more of a dark oak color, this one is actually, if you use it in its, you know, in its neat form. Uh, but you could actually water it down a little bit with a little bit of water at this stage, like you would mix it normally. I'm not going to, I'm gonna make it a bit darker just so you can see what I mean. So I'll put a little bit more water in there, or actually wood dye in there, and then we'll um, give it another bit, bit of a mix. Now I do it bit by bit. I don't put too much water in at once, or, or, or in this case, the wood dye, um, because what happens, it'll separate. So I do it until I get a bit of a paste. A safe now because the actual powder is now a paste. So, um, like I say, wear a mask. Uh, if you do it once in the blue moon like this, well then, isn't really an issue. It should be fine. And besides, by the time it affects me, I'll be dead anyway. <laughs> so yeah, if you're a young person, you really look after your future by taking every precaution that you possibly can with anything that you do. Not just whether or not the wood, the wood glue itself, or anything like that. It could be uh, the dust itself when you're doing your sanding, or anything like that, because they all can contain uh, carcinogens, such as um, Douglas fir contains a, a, a certain amount of carcinogen, apparently. It's on the list, anyway, so um, just take precaution, especially when you're younger, because that's when you're gonna get the problems of when you're older. Yeah, it's not great, like my dad, yeah. 
Okay, so now I'm mixing it up and it's becoming quite a thick paste now. So I'm going to put some more in there, as you can see. And I'll probably, I might actually add a little bit of water in there this time instead of the, the dye, because it's extremely dark at the moment. And then what we'll do is we'll keep adding this, um, uh, the dye or the or the water until it's a constituency, 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 the a thickness. <laughs> so it's got the right meniscus. And I keep mixing it until I'm satisfied it is what I what I want. Now, let's get in there. It's, it takes a bit more mixing with the dye. But as you can see, look at the colour of that. So that is almost like a dark, like a walnut colour. Works brilliant. I've used it so many times like this. And it doesn't affect the actual strength of the glue. Well, for me it hasn't. I haven't noticed any discernible difference whatsoever. The only discernible difference I got was when polyvine, when it was polyvine, thought it was a good idea to um, change the recipe, and that was not a good idea. They ruined it. And luckily, Eureka has got hold of it, and they've returned to the original recipe. Now, I've suggested to um, <laughs> the, the, the salesperson that um, uh, Eureka, maybe you should think of some additives for your powdered resin wood glue because woodworkers who do furniture work and what have you not just people who do construction work you know for outside wood glues what have you, they might actually like to have a coloured glue mm. now the beauty about cascomite is it sands really well dust my skin not forget um but it sands really sands sands very very well because it's hard so you can make a really good filler with it as well. So you can do exactly the same with a wood dye, a bit of sawdust and what have you, and then you've got a, a coloured filler, a very strong coloured filler that sands really easily to a nice smooth finish. It's good stuff, I'll tell you, it's really versatile. You know, the other things I've used this cascomite for is also for finishes. All my workbenches up here, including this one, is actually finished in cascomite. You mix it up, you splosh it around all the place, you scrape a boat, let it go off, and you've got a resin finish. It's not shy, it's a bit of a luster, but it's protective. And it works. Crazy, I know, isn't it? Good stuff, this old cascomite, you know, that stuff here. Actually, got a big tub over there, yeah. So just let you know, that's um, Eureka that sent me these glues over, so I've just, you know, um, they're not sponsoring me or anything like that, other than the fact that they've sent me glue. So, is that sponsorship? I suppose maybe it is, I don't know. Um, anyway, I don't mind promoting a product that I've always believed in, because I've always used it in the boat building game, but also now you could use it in your furniture as well. So if you had to put a walnut together, you know, walnut boards, glue them up edge to edge, and you've got a glue line, argument's sake, let's say she's done the right thing, got tight on the ends, and a little bit, you know, um, slacker in the middle, tiny, 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 tiny amount of foul or whatever, and, uh, and then you've got this stuff, you ain't gonna see that glue line, are you? No, not when your glue is that colour. Do you know of any other glues that are that colour? Hmm? That's ideal for that purpose. If you, if you didn't, I know, I can say you wouldn't use the sort of glue for marquetry and what have you. But yeah, you could get away with the murder, couldn't you? <laughs> anyway, that's cascamite, powdered resin wood glue, and that is my coloured wood glue that I've made using this, oh, a uh, de noir. Yeah, basically, nah. <laughs> Cassel, the base of Cassel. That's what I've used. Any water-based wood dye will work. You can't use solvent-based, it's going to be water-based wood dye. And, you know, because it's, it's a, a water-based hard effect. The, you know, it's, a, it's amazing, a bit like the stuff they, they use to uh, bandage your legs up with, where they stick those bandages in a bucket of water and it sends all the resin off, you see. That's what this stuff is, basically. So there you go, the cascamite in your legs. <laughs> so, okay, so there you go. That is my coloured wood coat. And tell me what you think. Do you think I'm absolutely bonkers? Yeah, possibly, but you know, it does work, you know, and that's what I've been doing for donkey's years. I'm just glad that the glue is back to how it used to be. So, yeah, Casco, I'll leave a link down in the description down below if you want to get yourself some, what have you. Um, but it's really good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to say ta-ta, you know. So ta-ta, but remember to wear a dust mask. Do as I say, not as I do. Ta-ta.